since everyone has been asking me how to make this. On today's video, let me show you how simple it is to build your own. So here we'll be using this type of tube. Um, it's a PVC pipe. I'm not sure what the diameter is. Uh, we can find out right now. Do an internal measurement of it. See if we can show you guys there. And it looks like one and a half. It's of an internal uh, diameter. So the other thing that we're using is this uh, secondary or primary of a transformer that we broke earlier. And the reason why we're doing this is because, as you can see, we have a lot of copper there. And I'm just going to wind, I'm not going to count it, so we're just going to wind it. So the first thing you do is get a little bit of tape. this up here like that and then you want to get it straight at first see if I can show that you want to kind of wind it straight and then do like a little bend here like that and there put some tape on it right and this could either be the top or the bottom it doesn't have doesn't matter but make sure that wherever you put it, this thing starts kind of at the bottom here. There you go. And now we just start winding. <clears throat> Also, try not to overlap the the coils, so try to keep them as straight as possible. And then uh, what I'll do is we'll come back once this thing is fully done. Okay, so midway point check. I have been doing this for about 30 minutes now and uh, still haven't even scratched the surface of this. We have a lot of wire here, so I think we have a, around 30 more minutes of, of winding and right now we have I think it's about 500 turns so this whole entire thing will be about a thousand turns and uh, the length of this is 8 inches so I'll probably stop around around here so I'll show you guys so finally I'm done wrapping it and I opened a little hole here and also one over here and I'm going to feed this wire through it and do a couple loops just to secure both ends. And then we can solder a thicker wire to, to this guy. And lastly, just uh, get some electrical tape and add it to the ends just to keep it from that last winding to come out. And if that last winding comes out, even though it's still tied here, it can still unravel. So I just put... Uh, just a little strip of electrical tape on both ends and that way it's secure and then you know for sure that this thing is not just going to slip out by mistake or or something yep now let's go and see uh the circuit so for this coil i'm gonna try something new and i've added a piece of cardboard around the bottom and i'm gonna wrap the primary around here and this way i can get the primary closer to the secondary and I don't lose as much energy when uh, when it turns on, right? This is how it looks. Now I'm just going to solder a thicker piece of cable to this guy. And on the other hand, it just stays uh, floating there like that. And that's where the spark is going to be. So during an initial power on, I ended up having to remove a large portion of the bottom. And I did around five turns. And this is the part that connects. Uh, basically, this is the base, right? And I'm going to try it out to see now if it actually powers on before I commit to putting everything into a single fixture. But just add uh, five turns. And if you can see it there, it's uh, soldered onto the main large winding. And uh, it's five turns of, this is a stranded 
copper wire. So this is the schematic that I followed to make this little board. Now let's make the final connections to the coils and see how it looks. So here it is fully set up. So before I turn it on, let's talk about the primary winding, which is this guy. All right. So as you can see, this is just a, a coil of some thick wire. I used uh, one of those wires that you put through the wall. I just uh, stripped it and wound it around something that was a little bigger than this. And just basically it's standing on its own. Eventually you might want to glue this to some type of fixture so it doesn't move and it doesn't touch the, the secondary coil. Another thing to note is that the spacing on this is not that good. right? So you want this to be as close as possible or as tight as possible. So you don't want to see any of the of the PVC pipe. right? Uh, and also notice how I'm using, I'm tapping to like the second coil. And this is just to keep that ratio of one to a thousand as close as possible. And if you move it up, then that ratio goes down. So then you get less step up voltage. So now that, that we know that, uh, let's turn it on and see how, it, see how it works. Okay, so initially we're gonna turn it on at 12 volts and we're drawing around 300 milliamps. And let's see if it lights up the bulb. Yep, awesome, but no spark. So let's amp up the voltage. Let's go to maybe 15. There you go. A lot more current now, but let's touch it. There you go. Now we get a little guy. Let's see. Nice. That's what you're gonna see. Well, there you have it, guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'll be happy to, to answer it. Oh, one last thing. If you do go up to 30 volts, this thing can handle 60 volts, but it'll get super duper hot. So if you do go to 30 volts, be sure to add a heat sink to this guy here because it'll get ridiculously hot. This BJT, um, it just doesn't like so much current and voltage at the same time, right? So an easy way to go around that is to get multiple of these and put them parallel to each other. That way you split the current between them and it'll give you a cooler effect on it. And uh, yeah, so that's it.